Hello, everyone. This is Dave Goulas, president of EZDC 3PL, and thank you for tuning in to the Beyond Fulfillment podcast, where we spotlight small business owners, entrepreneurs, startup founders, and we have real conversations about their journey, what it's really like, and what they've learned along the way. Thank you and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of the Beyond Fulfillment podcast. I'm your host, Dave Goulas of EZDC 3PL. And I'm so excited for today's episode because I have a friend of mine, our guest, uh, the founder of Adventure CBG, Tora Torres. Welcome, Tora. Hi. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, we were just talking before we started, and uh, you mentioned that this is your very first podcast. So congratulations, and I'm honored. Yay. I'm honored. <laughs> Yeah, this is exciting for me. I'm like, yeah, I guess I've made it to the podcast, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this show is brand new. Uh, I had this idea literally about a month ago, and I just I asked my marketing team, who is phenomenal, and I, I trust them, and I said, "What do you think?" And they said, "I think it's a great idea." So we went full speed ahead, and we got it up and running, and, and here we are. Uh, so you and I we connected uh, a few months ago via LinkedIn. Just started talking, and then we met up at Expo East uh, a few weeks back. But you've got a really uh, exciting concept and, and a new business that you're you're building from the ground up. So if you could just tell us um, what what Adventure CPG is. Well, Adventure CPG is basically a collective of brands coming together to change the way the system has been done in terms of distribution to retail. And so our tagline is distribution and retail collectively easier. Okay. Okay. So at the show, it, it was interesting too, because we walked the show and we talked to some brands together and then I, I did a lot of my own as well. And so one of the common themes, uh, and for those of you that don't know, Expo East is like the natural products industry. So all the natural food that's sold into the all the natural supermarkets, as well as a lot of vitamins and supplements, organic, um, different drinks, and, and all sorts of different foods, they all meet at this, this show. There's Expo uh, East uh, and Expo West. So we were at Expo East in Philadelphia a few weeks back. But one of the interesting things is everyone I talk to, um, virtually they have distribution from one of two major suppliers. And you were kind of explaining how the system works to me, where if someone wants to sell into like a, a major retailer in the natural food space, they, they really have no choice but to go through one of these two suppliers. And I guess yeah. you were saying that there's there's a lot of restrictions and it's it, they don't really, they, they, there's a large percentage they have to pay and not a lot of um, maybe service they're getting for that. Can you kind of talk about what it's like to be a brand in today's climate? Yeah, absolutely. So. These two major distributors and even the industry right now are following a certain model, which is putting brands out of business. So currently, let's say the, the stand, for example, the standard model for distribution for conventional products, meaning anything like um, a bag of chips or craft or whatever, is like 8% to 10%, uh, 12 at the very max for delivery. Hey, uh, <laughs> these two major uh, distributors are charging 35% and discounts on top of that. So a brand can be caught just at the very basic level at 50% of their, their revenue gone. And because of this model, the everybody, the smaller distributors are also charging this. So it's like across the board, our natural products industry is being charged 25% to 35% for distribution. Uh, there are some models that uh, don't have any fees or kind of mitigate some of that. Uh, these two major distributors actually promote that in a sense internally. So you could be charged anywhere from 35% all the way up to 150% of. So you can, you can send them a, a bunch of product and you expect maybe a check of $10,000 for the product you sent them, and you'd be getting a check for $2,000. That doesn't even give you enough to replenish what you sent them. So you are then looking for VC funding and, and banks to float you money uh, for something that's not even sustainable. 
And that perpetuates a system that ends up putting natural brands out of out of the industry, like out of business. So we are having, it's becoming harder and harder to put brands onto store shelves and have consumers pay for it because it's just so expensive. I mean, you would think that uh, a, a brand that maybe has two, three ingredients in it, you know, it could be like sugar, flour, and water or would be cheaper than a highly processed cookie, right? Um, and that's just not the case right now. And it, it, there's several reasons for that, but this is a big chunk that we're trying to change. Okay. And did this happen over time with like consolidation where, where these, these two, these, these two distributors kind of acquired a lot of the other players in the industry and. and From my understanding. Yes. Yeah. From my understanding it is. And it was, and because of that, it kind of left, uh, smaller distributors to their medium size, medium to small regional, regional distributors to kind of pick up those pieces. So you could have a regional distributor who has maybe 35 brands, uh, you know, maybe like 100 brands, 180 or something like that um, or less. But then they have to then do the billing, the sales. Uh, there's a lot of cost involved in that. And so they've basically covered that into the 35%, but because they have so much, I mean, in my opinion, because they have so many, so many brands and also uh, uh, locations, because you can imagine one location can have thousands of doors, their stores or doors, uh, managing that can be kind of difficult. And so that some brands don't get the attention that they need in order to sell in. So then they also have to buy, uh, pay for their own sales team to go out and so that's another cost on top of that. Um, it it kind of goes on and on, but that's kind of the start of that model. Okay. And and just to give uh, everyone an idea of your background, so you've been involved in the natural products industry for well over a decade. Is that right? Yeah. I started with Reed's Ginger Brew, Virgil's Root Beer under Chris Reed. Um, I was uh, being mentored by him. So I got to learn everything about the business in his facility. Uh, it was a great experience in terms of knowledge and just learning how everything works and how a brand works and production to distribute. I even started my own little distribution system uh, in Los Feliz for the, the um, I got into the, what is it, like the little business association there and talked to all of them and we were all working side by side. So that was fun. Um, I learned a lot in sales and marketing and product development and manufacturing. So I, I got to understand the big picture there. Okay. And w when did you get the idea to do something uh, like Adventure CBG and, and form a collective to, to really change the, this for brands? You know, I was thinking about that. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, um, I'm the kind of person who's, who's motivated by uh, a problem. Uh, so if there's a problem and I just keep hearing it over and over again and I can help in any way, really, uh, I'm going to. And I think one of my strong suits is connecting people. And so the more I'm talking to brands and the more I'm talking to brokers and, and distributors and everybody is not making what they should be making, even in the system that we're currently in. I mean, as a sales rep on the I think that's probably where it really started, like as a sales rep on the streets of New York, um, just realizing how much we're getting paid. Like we're, it's in New York, like you have to make a lot of money. I think the lowest I got paid was te technically it would be 40K a year. I don't know how you survive on that. Uh, 40K, 50K, like we need to be around 75 in order to make a substantial living, 65, 75,000 a year. and um, there's no money for that. And actually we're kind of the first to get cut because products have to come first. You have to make product to go onto the store shelf and everything else comes secondary. And so your profits are being eaten up. And so it kind of creates this like unfair uh, system. And so I've just started to realize that in each level of this whole system, um, there's, there's a breakdown in, in, in finances and what's capable and, and feeding people actually in, in every level. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I was just kind of doing some research before uh, you came on about the natural products industry. And for what I can find in the last 10 years, the revenue in this industry has doubled, where it's basically gone from 100 billion to 200 billion, roughly, in the last decade. So you think about the amount of money that people are spending on all these brands that we love, meaning people want to take care of their health, people want to um, buy a quality product so that the money is there. But the system, you know, that we're talking about, it, it really leaves, it, if I'm understanding you right, it really leaves brands in a tough position to where so much is being taken off the top. And it's it's already, even starting out, it, it seems like it's already a, like a low margin business. If you're talking about food, refrigerator products, glass bottle stuff, all that sort of, sort of thing. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So now when, when did you start putting, putting all these people together and really getting Adventure CPG um, and running? Well, I think it starts with the idea. So it's, it's a lot of talking to, to influential people within the industry, right? It's, Hey, where's this problem? Where are the solutions possibly? Um, what are the pain points? And what, re what resources do we have available to us? And we're in a new age now. Like I can't imagine doing this before where there wasn't any tech and we couldn't connect the way we, we do now. Um, but um, that's, I, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> that's okay. So when, so you have this idea, you want to yeah. help uh, you want to help these brands basically stay alive and get a more level playing field because they work so hard to bring us the products we love. So when you, when you have this idea, like where, where do you, like you said, you start with talking to people, but then what, what comes next? How do you put this all together? Yeah, you got to start listening to the people who are, are, who are actively giving you information and actually care about it. I'm finding that like when you're talking to somebody, you can really tell how involved they want to be just by their interest level. Um, sure, there's some people that will kind of like blow you off and make you think that you're like, they're super active, but then you really find those people are like, yes, and then this idea would be better and they just start bouncing stuff off of you. And so then, you know, those are going to be your partners in this um, and help really get a bigger picture because I sure don't know all of it, um, but I know people who, who either know people. It's always, we say in, in consulting is like, you're, you're literally leveraging networks upon networks and that's how you're successful and so i'm using that same model here uh in solving this issue and it's it's hey we have we need to know where our voids are right so it's like we need this we don't have this where can we find this and then you're looking for it and just being the nature of i guess consulting or problem solving i've already built up those skills and how to figure those out and how to um, problem solve and make a solution work. Um, and that just like, don't give up mentality. I think that's what drives it. And that's what allows you to see success. So it's, I feel like it's like, okay, you come up with this great idea, you find out what, um, what other information there is within that idea, then you craft a plan. Within that plan, it's always gonna change, but then you have those people within each section of those plans to help align them correctly in a way that's practical. And that's kind of where we are right now. Okay, okay. And just judging by, uh, you know, be walking the show with you and just seeing what you have online, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of interest and you have a lot of brands on board with this idea. Yeah, I think that's the easiest part. <laughs> I think that's <clears throat> the easiest part. They are, brands are so in trouble and they see it that they're desperate in like a, a positive way to get out of this system. Cause ultimately like if you, you've met any, like these brands are doing it for the right reason. They want healthier consumers and they're not getting to them and they're frustrated. So it's, it, it's a no brainer for them. And it's a no brainer for everybody within the industry that's seeing it and wants to make money. In. Cause we're all here for the right reasons. That's how this industry started. But like the food is not safe. We need alternatives. And what can we do? And so everybody's on that playing field. We want to all feel better as a society. Okay. 
Now, what, what's been the, the hardest part about getting this idea from, you know, something that, that you thought of and that makes sense and people are on board with into like a tangible business? You know, it's, that's like two things I say. It's always yourself, right? Like you're always going to doubt yourself like regardless and so like I try to like I've been meditating for like 15 years you know more like I've been in the meditation that I go with the Art of Living Foundation uh they've been amazing and I've I've grown up in there so I think it was 23 years when we counted I came in when my mom came in obviously when I was like five um well I'm, I'm 40 now so <laughs> that works out, but, um and so it's just like hey Tora like just keep going until you can't go any further. And there've been very instrumental people in saying, hey, you can't make, like, I can't find what you care about in somebody else building it, right? So it's like, I believe in what you're doing and why you're doing it and just keep going. And so it, I don't have an excuse. And people keep saying it's a good idea. So I'm going to keep going until somebody says, this is a bad idea. I'm going to figure out why it's a bad idea. I'm just going to keep going until it either works or it doesn't. I don't, but I need to keep those voices out of my head. <laughs> I think that's for most people. Um, and stay too true to myself. Also, the other thing is, um, actually, I think I think that's like the biggest thing. That is the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all have, right. I think that's just part of being a human being, right? You have this survival based yeah. mind that wants to keep you safe and comfortable. And when you have these dreams and these, these goals and these visions that come from your heart and you're like, all right, I'm going to go for it. Then your mind is just like, wait, 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 no, <laughs> well, yeah. let's think about this. And it starts like all these thoughts come at you. I think that's something we all deal with. And, um, you know, I'm always looking for different strategies too. Cause I, you know, I have the same thing and I always just try to reframe it and think about my reasons why. And I just live by like, like, just do it, just go do it, you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. And just keep going. Like you said, you know, I think within that too, like I just went to this like seminar and it was, it was saying that um, something about uh, having to, understand the situation like actually it's hard I can't even remember how to ref uh how to phrase it um maybe it's just not for the stock show <laughs> okay okay All maybe good. it's just like okay it's just not coming to me <laughs> Move with the punches <laughs> All good um so being a startup founder right and clearly it looks like you're bootstrapping this uh, as far as running the business, uh, I looked at your your LinkedIn extensively last night and I saw you just launched the blog like about three weeks ago. And I think you've got like 10 of them up there, a bunch of videos. And it's, I was really impressed. Like you just seem like a natural, like you just, this is my life. This is every aspect. And you're taking your mom to the doctor and you're dropping your cousin off at work and you, you got your dog there and then you got your meetings and it all flows so nicely. Like, is that something you've always had a knack for? Uh, you can thank COVID for that. <laughs> it was the TikTok era. I jumped on that bandwagon. Um, I think I, I did a lot of exploring with, uh, I, I learned. So like, I think I was extremely dyslexic when I was little. So I had to learn how to be me um, in every aspect from like being charming or uh like even talking to somebody on the phone was difficult. I remember I always tell a story where like I was too afraid to call the pizza man to like, hey, I want to order a pizza. Uh, <laughs> it just wasn't in me. My parents are very powerful, like very intelligent, very um, charismatic and welcoming and very natural people. And I just didn't have that aspect. So like learning to pick that up and skills are actually pretty, like I've gotten the hang of it now. You know, so now I'm able to like figure out, okay, we're doing this blog. Okay, what are other people doing that make it successful or make it authentic? And then I'm looking for who I am within that. So I can't just pick anybody and how their blogs do, even if they're successful, they, everybody has their own style. So it's like, how is my style fit into their style so that I can make sure that 
it's successful in representing what I want it to, to show. And I, and in this blog that I started, I think the biggest thing in the industry is that they can't, there can be bad actors like in any industry, right? So there's all these new newbie brands that are coming and they have this great idea and this passion to give healthier food. And then you have these, uh, I guess, people who just aren't at the top of their game. They might be good at kind of what they're doing or they might be a salesman, might have history in it, but they're not like excellent. Like these smaller brands are like at the at the tip of like, hey, I need to succeed, I just launched. And so there's a level to that that you need to like get them to. And um, I just wanted to show within my blog that I'm working. Like I'm not bullshitting you. I'm not trying to take your money. I'm not just saying I have this great idea. I'm saying, hey, I care very passionately about what I'm doing. I have the know-how. I have the connections. And this is the work I'm doing for you. And that's, that's really important, I think, in, in building a community. And so that's why I'm doing it is I just want to show people like, hey, I'm a real person. Let's do this together. And I, I'm working. Yeah, yeah. And I remember on the very first one, you said transparency starts with me. So this is my life. And uh, it's amazing how you can just be so open about everything. And, and like you said, you're being transparent because right? If you want brands to really buy in and join this group and, and be on this mission with you, they need to know that the founder, like you said, is working, is committed, is doing all the things that uh, that it takes to, to get something like this successful. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's excellent. Okay. Um, and another thing too that I noticed, uh, I always am impressed with businesses that are like mission driven because you know what it's like getting something off the ground and growing a startup, it's, it's very difficult. And you're often kind of blindsided by things you didn't think of and uh, things take longer than you want. And you a lot of disappointments, a lot of delays, a lot of stumbling and whatnot. So <clears throat> I always think it's important to have something bigger than just, we're going to make this business and make a profit and make some money, but really have a mission behind it that you care about. And, and clearly you have, I'm just seeing all the stuff that you put out, like you really care about other people. You you have a social impact side to your business too. So like how important is that that in terms of keeping yourself sustained and keeping you going when, when things are when things are difficult? Well, I think there's two things is is i I ended up in this industry successful just by doing just showing up. So you just have to show up every day, right? Um, and I also, it, within that, it's like the more people you have supporting you and rooting you on, it's like you have to find your allies. You have to find the people who want to see you succeed. Um, just even certain words, like it can become your mantra. Uh, my friend, um, uh, George, I mean, for me, his, his words were, uh, I need only you can do a business the way you want to see it done. Right. And so for me, that was, Hey, there are plenty of other companies doing it. Why do I have to do this? This is a lot of work. This is a lot of work. This is a big goal. Like, how am I going to accomplish this? You know, and you can tell yourself that at the end of the day, an idea is just an idea. Every idea is just an idea. There's no big ideas. This is what Chris Reed said. There's no big ideas, no little ideas. It's just an idea. You're either going to do the idea or you're not going to do the idea, right? And um, as long as you surround yourself by people who are rooting for you, you can, who can support you, can leverage you, give you more information, you can't do this on your own. And I, I think when I was younger, I thought I could. I was like, I got a great idea. We can do it. And I was like, you always need people. Um, you, can't, you can't mitigate something you don't see. You can't change something you can't see. You can't do anything that you can't see, right? Like if I don't have it figured out, I'm my biggest problem, period. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's, um, I think one of the first posts you did for Adventure CBG too, you talked about all the benefits and a big one of them was the fact that when you have this network and this collective of independent brands, just the, the, the sharing of knowledge and the sharing of ideas 
within in the networking and the fact that we all get stronger from learning from each other's experiences with a, was a big aspect of it. And, and that was actually similar concept was my motivation for this podcast, meaning I've learned so much from talking to other people and it, it helps so much because this, this whole journey for me is not what I expected. And so I thought, why not bring these conversations to the public? Cause there's other people just like me that are going to resonate just like you, the same thing. They're, they have an idea, they're working on it, have challenges, they're looking for information and we get that from other people and leveraging kind of other people's experiences, their ideas, their insights, and then the teamwork together. So how important has the network been in just helping the overall collective grow? Yeah, I, I couldn't do it without it. I it I built, see the thing is, is, is I've just by being me, have built up this network of friendship and commitment and just doing what I say and, it just comes from like who I am that there are people who follow me. So it's like, it's, it's like, yeah, they're extremely instrumental in, in this. I can't do it without them. And I like to think that they, you know, they need me just as much. I mean, we've, I have some amazing friendships out of this. It's, it's the most important thing. It is actually the most important thing in this specifically. Like if I was doing something small, like, I don't know, I need to write up something. I can just go to ChatGPT or something, you know, like I can do it myself. But for a project this big, it's, yeah, it's not me. I'm just bringing people together. Okay. And another thing too, I noticed on the blogs is um, talking about being a resourceful founder. Like when you had the, the expo, I'm going to expo and here we are making the shirts and you're literally going to like, <laughs> whatever it was, Michael's or something, and you get the, the stuff and you're stamping the logo on the white t-shirt and then you're you're like literally doing everything. And so <laughs> like how how important is that as far as being able to be resourceful in all these different areas to put together what, what you need for this business? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, you don't realize how many skills you need to be an entrepreneur. Like there's just, you have to kind of be good at everything <laughs> or at least willing to learn. It's, um, there are so many skills or I guess it just depends. Like I'm hard on myself in terms of like, I can do it better. I'm somebody who doesn't like conflict. Um, I really like, I mean, in that sense, it's like, I want to bring peace. I want people to get along and I want them to do it for the right reasons. And so like having that, it just makes me want to um, learn as much as I can to be successful, right? It's like, I ultimately want that. So like, if I'm doing a blog or if I'm going to Michael's to get my branding done, I um, I just got to learn as much as I can. Like, I just can't put it any other way. You're only going to be, you're only limited by what you know. You are literally always limiting yourself and so I'm I just I guess I just feel like that's the most important thing because it keeps bouncing back in my face like if I don't know something I'm like I'm stuck right it's like if I don't know how to for instance we're doing distribution right that is a system that I know about am I an expert do I literally schedule trucks no I have no idea I'm totally limited in that space I need somebody in that space unless I want to learn everything about that. And I'm sure I have time for that, but I don't have time for that. And our industry doesn't have time for that. So I'm going to try and learn everything that I can. I think the coolest thing that I learned in one of the videos actually was uh, lead generation. I have a hard time with like everybody does. You get a zillion cards from the trade show, right? And then you put it into your lead list. That's an accomplishment to begin with. If it's not auto-generated into your like Excel and I, uh, I saw this TikTok. I love TikTok. I learn. It's, it's all about what you pay attention to in the algorithm so that it feeds you more information. Because, like, I don't need to listen about how somebody's day was or, I mean, I do love cat, you know, dog videos and stuff. But anyway, going back. Um, uh, oh, yeah. So it taught me, it was like, hey, you can send an email straight from your Excel sheet. And I was like, how? <laughs> like, I want that in my life. So I 
followed his code and it didn't work. And then I went to chat GPT and it said, oh, we saw there's some grammar errors or something in there in your code. And so it fixed it and then I put it back in and I was like, please work. And it didn't work. And I was like, what is going on here? And so um, I asked it again, specific questions. Because I, I, I previously learned from TikTok, like what I need to do to prompt chat GPT, right? It's like, how do you, how does the system work so that I can utilize it to where I'm weak? Um, and so finally, my husband came in and he's much more, he, he's even stronger than I am tech. And so he figured it out. And so now I can go in Excel and literally under, let's say my, my first lead it has their email and I can write an email in there. There's already a template. I can alter the template however I want or erase the template, put a new email in. And all I have to do is press send and it sends. You know how much time that send, saves? I'm like, so like our technology is next level. But if I didn't know that, you know how much a lot longer that would take me? I'm all about like progressing, making it shorter, making it better. Let's Let's make it like sustainable, but also like practical. And um, yeah, okay, I just went on that rant, but you know, yeah, like, you need to learn everything you can. <laughs> absolutely, and well, like you touch on on AI and, and that type of technology. I mean, really, like, so I know there's a lot of people that are, uh, you know, apprehensive about it or whatnot, but it's a it's a tool that allows you to get things done faster that can help you expand and be more productive and grow. And as it becomes more commonplace, we're just, everything is going to expand because a lot of tasks are going to be done quicker, more efficiently with, and, and leveraged by technology, like you said. So it's, a, it's really a good thing. And I think, like you said, just learning how to use it, being open and always looking for how can technology help me perform better. And the mission stays the same. I want to reach these people. I want to connect with these people. I want to follow up on these leads. I want to get my message out there. So if technology, whatever it is, helps you do that faster. I mean, that's said it's a game changer. Yeah, perfect. That's exactly it. Um. All right. So Adventure CVG, you're in beta testing right now. Um. I was checking out the website and you do have one very strong, prominent, um, longstanding brand that you're featuring on there, um, Dr. Bronner's. So talk, talk about how important it is to have something, a brand of that stature. Um, I think that their annual sales are something like $170 million. So very successful company. It's been around, I think over a hundred years. Is that right? Yeah, they've been around. Gosh, their their soap generation goes back even further than that. I mean, um, I I don't even know the correct date because I I've watched their video several times. I think the importance of that brand specifically, um, it's all about what they say and do. So they're trailblazers, and one they represent good. Um, and I say good in terms of like the industry and what to do right. And they are one of these companies that doesn't pay any deductions. They have such volumes that they have influential power over the industry um, and the distributors. So it's it not only helps be like our North Star, um, it helps other people pay attention so that they can say, okay, we can trust her. And that's what I'm really trying to build right now is, hey, we're all doing this together for the right reason. I need as much. We, I mean, working with them, is, we need people to know that we're safe like this is a safe space we're not trying to put people out of business we're trying to bring them back to business um and so that's that's the purpose of it and then moving with that market and figuring out okay what can we do with this i guess power the power of not only dr brown is but the power of our unit together working together for a common goal um i don't i don't think I think we're going to make it like, I don't think there's anything that can really stop us if we all work together. And like you said too, brands, so many are recognizing that they're in trouble and needs to be a different solution. Um, and the system has kind of evolved into what it is. Um, there's, there's more money than ever in this industry. Have, have you gotten any backlash for being sort of like a disruptor to, to the way the current system operates? I think the only people who I get that kickback 
are the ones who are scared that we're trying to take something from them, trying to kill their livelihood or, um, but I'm actually not trying to, there's a place for everybody in this. And that's, that's the hardest thing to convince people because there's so much fear. Like I was talking just like with yourself to saying you can't do it or you're not good enough or, you know, how are you going to make a zillion things work? You just have to leave a room for a little bit of magic. Uh, but honestly, the people who are doing it right and give a shit, there's a place for you. There is absolutely, we need you. We This industry doesn't run on like, even those two big distributors, it runs on all of us working together. I mean, currently we created a system because we needed to work together. So it's just, hey, we're just changing that system and we're allocating money for different reasons. So instead of taking money because of fees, you're gonna be taking money because you're partnering. It's just like a mentality. It's like you're taking money because you're gonna be helping them in X, Y, and Z area instead. Or, hey, you no longer have to take money for, um, I say this for some, some distributors, like you'll no longer take money for your sales team or your, um, uh, your, your, your billing department. You just need to deliver, but you're going to be delivering more products than you ever delivered before. So that's why you want to join. So like you're no longer housing inventory. You no longer need a giant warehouse. You no longer need all these things, but you're passing more products through your trucks than anybody ever. Like we're just real reallocating what they're doing to now this new system there's room for you right we want people to live <laughs> we want them to have food we want them to go on vacation we want them to have quality of life these are the things that dr Bronner is also instilled so everybody's paid fairly everybody you know has health benefits we're not trying to cheat anybody we're just trying to make a system where we can all uh reap the benefit reap the benefits of it yeah yeah, absolutely. Right. And like you said, that mission for just wanting, wanting everyone to have a good quality of life and be treated fairly and do business with people fairly and not have to, you know, smoke and mirrors or whatever it is where they think it's a great deal and they're getting taxed and out of business basically, right, with yeah. the fees. So, so yeah, I think that's like we talked about earlier, the mission is just so important to keep it going. Yeah. I mean, every, I also like when I say like, the distributors don't need sales like we will need the salespeople, but just in a different area like everybody still has to do their job <laughs> you know we're gonna still need a building department you know like we're all these things will still exist it's just gonna be in a different mentality and maybe a different location or a different umbrella or whatever it ends up being um we need everybody this is a group effort so if brands want to learn more about how how they can participate and, and what's in it for them, what's the best way to uh, to reach out to you? Um, I think I'm rich. I, the best way is through my email, uh, Tora at adventurescpg.com. Um, LinkedIn is also great. Just message me on LinkedIn. Just say, hey, mention the video. I mean, the, um, you know, the podcast. And then you can absolutely just, get a hold of me or we'll figure it out. I mean, there's, there's lots of ways to, I'm everywhere. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Go, just Google my name. <laughs> you'll, you'll be able to get a hold of me. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then I, I take it the blog, the vlogs are going to be like a regular part of your, um, your marketing from now on. You're going to continue to do that and just show where you are, what you're up to and all the, uh, the things that places you go. Yeah, absolutely. I got two right now in my, uh, in my draft. I think the hardest thing is just being consistent with everything and you know in your life things come up and you're like I gotta post that I gotta post it hurry up oh my god I forgot again you know? <laughs> so most of those are about a minute how long so obviously you're filming or you have someone with you filming all the you know all the time how long does it take you to put one of those together like from start to finish product actually I'm doing all of it um I'm just holding my phone uh it's probably I would say an hour, hour and a half. It just depends on what I decide to do. If I put music behind it and it's just um, photos, then it like auto cut it, it uh, cut it. That's me being a little lazy um, to just to get it out there, just so you see that I'm doing something. But I need it to make more sense, and so I'm working on like, okay, what does my actual content look like right now? 
Uh, so you'll be seeing, it'll probably take probably an hour and a half. If, if I get more detail on it, which I don't think I will, I'll hand it over to somebody else to really do it because that's too much of my time. I and mean, you guys want me working, not on my videos. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> right. Right. But yeah, no, I think it's fantastic too. And you found something that you're good at, that you enjoy, and it really is a quick way to just convey a message of where you're at, what you're up to, and and, and what you're working on to move this this whole initiative forward. So that's fantastic. Um, yeah, okay. You. Well, thank you so much, Tora, for coming on the show. I think it's been a fantastic interview, learning about your journey and where you're at. And again, if you want to get a hold of Tora Torres and find out more about Adventure CPG, uh, you can connect with her on LinkedIn or shoot her an email at Tora at AdventureCPG.com. Thank you, Tora, for, for being on the show. Thank you so much, David. Such a pleasure always to hang out with you. All right. That's it for us to this week, guys. Take care. Hello again. Dave Goulis here. Thank you for tuning in to the Beyond Fulfillment podcast. If you like what you heard on today's episode and you got value from it, please click the link below to subscribe so you'll be notified of future episodes when they drop. If you would like to be a guest on a future show, you can also click the link below or you can email us at info at beyondfulfillmentpodcast.com. That's info at beyondfulfillmentpodcast.com. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you next time.